Hi, my name is Sophia Lala, and I'm currently a high school senior, and today I will be talking about one of the most important ancient Egyptian artifacts ever discovered. The Egyptian civilization is one of the oldest and most fascinating civilizations that has ever existed. I would be very surprised if there was anyone over the age of five on this planet who wasn't aware of some aspect of this amazing civilization. Even if we don't quite fully understand this ancient culture, there are aspects of it that are immediately familiar to all of us. All of you, I'm sure, know about the Pyramids of Giza. You know about the Sphinx. All of you probably know about mummies. All of you have probably heard of Cleopatra. Fine, that's Elizabeth Taylor, but you know what I mean. You can all probably recognize Egyptian hieroglyphs when you see them, whether they are on a temple wall picture or on a t-shirt. All these aspects of Egypt have seeped into our collective consciousness through books, music, a lot of bad TV shows, and B-grade movies. I bet you also know about the most famous Egyptian document ever found. The Rosetta Stone, right? We all know about the Rosetta Stone because it helped us decipher Egyptian hieroglyphs. But how many of you know that the Rosetta Stone is not the oldest Egyptian document or even the most important? A bit of history here about the Rosetta Stone. Napoleon led an expedition to Egypt in the year 1798. He took with him not just his army, but also mathematicians and historians and scientists. This is the team that discovered the Rosetta Stone in 1799. He lost the stone to the British in 1801, but that's a different story. When was the Rosetta Stone actually carved? Well, we know that it has hieroglyphs on it as well as Greek. So it was obviously carved when Egypt was under Greek rule, when the Ptolemies were ruling Egypt. It was, in fact, carved in 196 BCE. How old is the Egyptian civilization, by the way? Over 5,000 years old. So when the Rosetta Stone is carved, the Egyptian civilization is already over 3,000 years old. So it is not close to being the oldest document or even the oldest stella discovered in Egypt. No, that credit goes to an artifact that you probably have never heard of, the Narmer palette. And here's a picture of that palette. As you can see, it is a slab of stone, a stella. It is two feet tall, shield shaped, and made out of a grayish green siltstone. You will also note that there are obviously two sides to this palette. And you can see both the front and the back here. How do we know which side is the front and which is the back? Actually, we don't know this for certain. Different scholars have different interpretations. For our purpose here, we will follow this convention. The front is the picture you see on the left of your screen and the back is the picture you see on the right of your screen. Let's look at both these sides now and try to figure out what they are telling us. The first thing you will notice is that for a slab of stone that is 3,200 years old, it is in pretty good shape. The etchings and the drawings are very clear and there are no scratches or cracks. All right, so let's look at the front of the palette first. The side that looks like there is a guy beating up another guy is what is usually considered to be the front of the palette. So let's talk about this side first. So first, how do we know that this palette depicts King Narmer? Well, that's easy. Look at the very top of the palette. What do we see? We see a catfish, which is the hieroglyph for the sound ner, and we see a chisel, which is the hieroglyph for the sound mer. So that's ner mer, narmer, the phonetic representation of the king's name. Note that the Egyptians did not use vowels. 
Also, these hieroglyphs are inside a drawing of a rectangular serra, or palace, which is how we know that Narmer was in fact a pharaoh. Okay, so now that we have established that, let's try to figure out why there is a tall guy holding another guy who is kneeling in front of him by his hair and beating him with a mace. Well, for that, let's look at the other side of the palette, the back of the palette. What do we see? We see two weird mythical creatures with their long necks intertwined. What does that mean? What's the significance of these creatures? To figure that out, we need to talk about Egypt in 3200 BC. In 3200 BC, Egypt is not Egypt as we know it today. In fact, it is two separate Egypts, Upper Egypt in the south and Lower Egypt in the north. Yes, that is not a mistake. Historians called Southern Egypt, Upper Egypt, and Northern Egypt, Lower Egypt. Why? because the Nile flows from the south to the north. So that is the naming convention. Mouth of the Nile is Upper Egypt. The Nile flows from Upper Egypt to Lower Egypt. Okay, so there are two Egypts, Upper and Lower, each ruled by a different pharaoh. And just like they do today, kings back then liked to wear crowns. The pharaoh of Upper Egypt wore a white crown that was shaped like a bowling pin, and the pharaoh of Lower Egypt wore a red crown that curled upwards like a snake. All right, so having established that, let's look at the front and back of the Narmer palette one more time. What kind of crown is the big guy, Narmer, wearing in the first picture? He's wearing a bowling pin crown, and that means he is the pharaoh of Upper Egypt. Now, let's look at picture number two, the back of the palette. Look carefully. Narmer is now wearing a double crown, the original bowling pin crown, of course, but his crown also has the snake-like shape now. Narmer has conquered Lower Egypt and has become the pharaoh of this unified nation state. That is what the entangled necks mean. They signify the unification of Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt into the first nation state in history. And Narmer is, therefore, the first pharaoh of this united Egypt. By the way, ever since this battle between Narmer and his enemy, all Egyptian pharaohs have worn the double crown. Now that we have established the main event that this palette documents, let's talk about some of the other things that we see. On the front, right on top, we see two cow heads. Some scholars say that this is the cow goddess Bat. It was usually rare for Bat to be depicted in artwork, but here, she is seen in bovine form. Sometimes, she also shows up as a human face with cow ears and horns, or even as a woman. After Egypt was unified, Ba's identity was often combined with that of Hathor, who was also represented as a cow, but was worshipped in different areas. Other scholars claim that cows are not animals of war or of victory, so these are not cows, but bulls, that represent strength. And we will see that a bull is depicted on the palette in a different place as well. On the left of Narmer is a man, a servant, he is much shorter, and he is bearing the king's sandals. To the right of Narmer and above the kneeling man is a falcon. That is the representation of the god Horus. And what is the falcon doing? Well, it is sitting on top of a set of papyrus flowers. And remember, papyrus flowers are a symbol of Lower Egypt. What else do we see? There is a man's head attached to the papyrus flowers at the bottom, and the falcon is holding a rope that goes through the man's nose. So the god Horus is helping Narmer by subduing his enemies. By the way, each papyrus stem is the number 1,000 in ancient Egypt. And how many stems are there? 
There are six stems. That's six thousand. Horus is helping Narmer take six thousand prisoners here. So, this is another representation of Narmer being victorious. And then finally, in the lowest section, we see two human figures. These are two enemies running away from Narmer. By the way, you will see that Narmer is depicted as larger than everyone else on this palette. That is normal. The king is always the largest figure in such depictions. Now, let's look at some other inscriptions on the back of the palette. Same two cowheads on the top, so that's the same as the front. Right underneath that, we see a sort of procession. Again, Narmer is the tallest guy here. Behind him is a sandal bearer. And right in front of him is a man whose name is inscribed in hieroglyphs right above him, Chet. In front of that man, there are four other men who are standard bearers. One man carries an animal skin, the man in front of him carries a dog symbol, and then the two men in front of him carry falcons. In front of these men are 10 decapitated men. These are symbols of Narmer's conquests in war. And at the very bottom, we see a bull knocking down the wall of a city and stepping on an enemy. Again, this symbolizes Narmer's conquest in this war. By the way, I do want to talk a little bit about the structure of how inscriptions are arranged on this palette. And it is very typical to Egyptian stelas and Egyptian art. Egyptian art is very structured. Here's what I mean. Everything is in sections on top of parallel lines called registers. These parallel lines serve two purposes. One, they act as a ground for someone to stand on or sit on. But they also divide the scene into different segments. For example, on the left picture, you will see three parallel lines and three sections or registers. The first line is right at the top where the serach is resting. That's the top register. The second parallel line is where the sandal bearer behind Narmer is. And then the third parallel line creates the third section or register where we see the two fleeing enemies. On the other side of the palette, we have four sections or four registers divided by three parallel lines. The first register with the serach, the second register with the procession, the third register with the creatures with intertwined necks, and finally, the fourth register with Narmer depicted as the bull. Not only does this artifact depict an important event in Egypt's history, the unification of the country, but it also contains some of the earliest hieroglyphs ever found. This palette was created around 3100 BCE, so it is one of, if not the, oldest Egyptian artifact that includes writing. So, while it's tough to cover all aspects of this artifact in just a few minutes, I hope that you have a bit more clarity on this truly important artifact from ancient Egypt. The Narmer palette is currently sitting in the permanent collection of the Egyptian Museum in Cairo, so if you want to go see it, it's there waiting for you. Thank you.